Bog Panda. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Bog Panda. Man, I was almost saying Squat Cobbler there. <laughs> it was super close. <laughs> welcome to Bog Panda. I'm Kelly at K E L L Y T H U L on Twitter and Instagram. I am Dr. Mike at Official Pagan on everything. Make sure you guys like, subscribe, leave a comment, buy a t shirt, do all the stuff you need to do to spread the panda word all over other people. Pandemonium. Yeah, I have to. <laughs> Pandemonium. Um, I have to, whenever I bring us in, it's still like a conscious thing. I have to stop and think for a second what we're saying. Yep. Yeah, it uh, when I kind of go, when I start to click into autopilot a little bit. It's a, it's a slightly different introduction uh, than that's <laughs> it. But um, uh, so probably a quick show here, but we wanted it's, uh, some interesting developments, trying to understand what they mean in the uh, biosphere, the Bioshock world. Uh, Bioshock Infinite, the third of the Bioshock series, uh, super awesome in Columbia, the floating city, very steampunky. Um, very reminiscent of possibly current politics. I don't know. It's just kind of, kind of thing going on, um, a blend of colonial and current politics. Uh, but, uh, uh, the, uh, there has kind of inexplicably been a number, not just like one or two, but closer to like nine, I think updates made to the PC version of Bioshock Infinite. Uh, and that's a bit of a head scratcher because it's kind of celebrating its nine year anniversary. <laughs> and so it's, it's been a little while. There was a remastering of the Bioshock series, I think about four years ago. Uh, and so it's got people wondering what's going on. And so, but, uh, and there's also the rumblings out there of Bioshock 4, it's under development. Nobody necessarily knows what the storyline is and all that. So just kind of an interesting development. So, Mike, do you have. When you heard about, okay, they're starting to kind of roll out some updates into Bioshock Infinite for the PC. Did did you have any idea maybe what might be behind that or any theories? Um, nothing that I've seen. I am excited by it, though. And to be honest, like the one that I revisit the most is actually probably the first Bioshock. Mm -hmm. I still, you know, bring that up here and there. Not even to play all the way through, but just to kind of like get into that sort of immersive environment for a little bit and just play a little bit. Um, just a fun game. Um, um, we were just talking off mic. I'm going away this weekend. I'm probably going to take the projector with me. I just reinstalled Bioshock on my laptop. So I'll probably be doing some of that on the projector over the weekend. So that'll be fun. Um, so yeah, it, it's just a great universe. And I love, I love infinite as well. Um, it's just a great universe. So it's cool to see that they're still keeping it alive in some form. So it's exciting in that sense. And I mean, I guess we are getting to the point where this is, you know, verging on retro gaming with the Bioshock series as a whole. So it's kind of, it's kind of an interesting thing. Um, one of the things that I think really interests me and, and we, you know, we get into this in different episodes, probably more spoiler alert for an upcoming one, um, probably more. But one of the things that always interests me about video games is kind of discovering new things later about them. Um, you know, there, there's so many weird hidden things in games and we still have people developing games for far outdated technology there's new commodore 64 games coming out all the time new amiga games yep. you know even a couple years ago genesis got a new official game published by sega when they did their mini so i mean there, there's new stuff coming out for for older systems all the time so it's cool to see new content even if it's just patches and updates and things just anything being done to games that are sort of aging as well because i think it's clear that retro gaming has such a, commu a huge community out there. Why stop developing something you already have as it gets into that sort of sphere of retro gaming <laughs> ages into it, I guess. Yeah. I mean, and that gets to be the interesting <laughs> challenges that, uh, uh, where's that line for retro gaming at? <laughs> you know, yeah. we, we talked about that in a previous show that you can kind of go on the technology if you want to and say, you know, once you kind of bump into this level, it's not retro gaming, but you know, this, the higher end kind of game experiences, you know, started showing up in things like Bioshock and Unreal and uh, some, some of these types of things. So you start to get into that environment already and those become 
pretty old games <laughs> after a while. Yeah. One, one could consider them retro games, but they're obviously running on a much stronger technology architecture than uh, the Atari 2600, for example. <laughs> That's a good point, though, because, you know, what's retro games to you and I isn't going to be retro games to, to somebody who's younger. Like to my nephew is like Bioshock looks like what an Atari 2600 game is to us. So, I mean, I, I guess perspective plays a big part in yeah. that as well. Yeah, absolutely. But, but it is good to see that they're doing updates. I mean, I'm, the article I read will include a link uh, in the description as we always do, but uh, the, the article seem to hone in pretty clearly to say this is a PC. The PC version is the one receiving the updates. Um, I, you know, they didn't, ex- they, they didn't specifically exclude the steam version, but I kind of wonder, you know, is it getting any of these updates? None of them seem to be like huge content updates. It does seem to be some cleanup and bug fixes. And there was some in the article, some theorizing that it was to kind of get it ready to be much more portable to like a steam deck kind of environment. And so it's just doing some the necessary cleanup to make that that operate uh, to see. So that that may just be it as they're working to continue to try and make these things more and more portable. Uh, Bioshock on the Switch is pretty fun. Done that for a while. <laughs> That's pretty cool to play. Um, but uh, so we'll, we'll have to see. But it's always it's always good news when something's happening in Bioshock, either new developments yeah. like Bioshock Four or enhancements to the games because it's just a a wonderful experience. And so be good to to see more of that absolutely do you think there's a cutoff for when they should stop adding content to a game hmm i so i i mean i i don't and you know i I hesitate to bring this up but uh, animal crossing is a good example of of that you know the 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 game of the pandemic (laughs) that kind of just exploded uh, and went in is that they recently announced that they're kind of ending their, they had been introducing kind of new series of enhancements over time. And now, now they're going to stop that. And so that is fairly short. So it's, to me, that feels kind of short because you really start to sustain your audience, your existing audience and bring more people in the more you keep that an ongoing entity. And I think it just really makes the game for me, higher value if i can say good i've got this game i'm experiencing it and i like it now but you know what in in every six months there's gonna be some little goodie that comes in that makes it a little better or a little different that would keep me kind of engaged in the game so i don't know what the the line the line is it does feel like bioshock infinite might be you know a good example one that was like wow i would have thought they would have stopped by now uh and to see but yeah so i don't i don't have a a strong line i think as long as the game's kind of you know it's just it's a chance to retain your existing customer base and get some more so i think as as long as the game's environment and logistics and stuff makes sense uh to do updates and you you can kind of uh add uh, things to it i say keep it pretty open-ended your thoughts uh, I feel the same way. The only thing, the only sort of caveat that I have to that in the back of my head, there's this gnawing George Lucas chewing at my brain of, of going back and constantly messing with the Star Wars movies. Like, I think that's where like a game, I think lends itself to, to upgrades like this and updates. And I'm still playing. We're both still playing games that we played, you know, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, things like that. So, so that's great to kind of see them still being worked on. But at the same time, when does it jump the shark into that George Lucas territory where you just messed with something and brought down its value? Yeah. When then the enhancements, not an enhancement anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and that's a lot more art than science. But uh, yeah, I think I think the right line is to, when you get there, stop. Don't do that. <laughs> yeah. So, so I, I think it's great, but I do think there's there's there is a cutoff somewhere. Yeah. So I think it's just they gotta you know the developers need to watch that line <laughs> so they don't cross it. Yeah. Yeah. When they break the true kind of through line of the game or the spirit of the game or the kind of core experience, and all of a sudden it's it's really kind of shifted. Uh, within the the game itself that's that's no good all right well hey if uh you get any theories on what they're doing with bioshock infinite let us know in the comments uh if you have any idea what bioshock 4 is going to be about let us know uh we'd really great to be really great to hear from you guys and 
I think with that, we're going to wrap this one up. And thanks for watching, everyone. Thanks, everybody.